Okay guys, so I'm just going to do this video today, it's just going to be answering uh, one comment that I got on my last video. So the video was on uh, Andrew Perlow's overfeeding experiment and why he ended up gaining some weight on that. So if you want to check that video out, I'll put a link to that video um, in the video somewhere here and in the description box below so you can check it out for yourself. Comment is from Superhuman991. There's so much bro science in the videos, many of the raw food, A11, and other YouTube gurus like Durian Rider, etc. provide that it just makes me sad. Please provide some studies and other stuff. Calorie restriction and what you talk about is just subjective. Uh, you talk about that you never calorie restrict, and that may be true, but that doesn't mean you eat a lot of calories. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, get your bro science shit together and start producing some real videos. To answer the first question, meaning that you don't eat a lot of calories. I do eat a lot of calories. I just finished breakfast, uh, so it's probably it's just, uh, just about 10.30 in the morning. And we had eight bananas in here eight large bananas and I poured in about 200 grams of sugar so that's about 1600 calories for breakfast. I'll have something similar for lunch around probably two or three and then I'll have dinner which will be probably about 15,000 15, or not 15,000, 1500 calories uh, worth of uh, rice at a, uh, at a vegan buffet here in Chiang Mai so that'll kind of be my day. So that's uh, between four to five thousand around 4500 calories conservatively. Um, so I do actually eat quite a bit every single day. So Superhuman wants me to provide some studies. So in that video, I mentioned uh, the search solution by Dr. John McDougall. So we're actually going to quote and cite that book specifically. So you can see here on my Kindle here, I have the search solution. I also have a few other good books. I have a lot more books on my ebooks on my Kobo account. Search solution. So there aren't any specific page numbers here in the, in the Kindle, so I can't quote specific page numbers. But I'm in chapter two, uh, which is people passionate about starches are healthy and beautiful. All right, let's go down to where the good information is. So right here, excess starch does not turn to body fat. A widely held myth holds that the sugars and starches are readily converted into fat, which is then stored visibly in our abdomen, hips, and buttocks. If you read the published research, you will see that there is no disagreement about this whatsoever among scientists, and that they say that this is incorrect. You notice here, he has citations. So we will go check out those citations once um, I finish reading this. After eating, we break down the complex carbohydrates into starchy foods, uh, in starchy foods into simple sugars. So basically, the difference between complex carbohydrates like starches and simple carbohydrates um, coming from fruit is that there's that extra process that complex carbohydrates have to be broken down into simple sugars whereas fruit is much more readily available just to be absorbed by the body in its natural state. So these sugars are absorbed in the bloodstream where they're transported to trillions of cells throughout the body for energy. If you eat more carbohydrate than your body needs, you'll store up to two pounds of it invis invisibly in muscles and liver in the forms of glycogen. If you eat more carbohydrate than you can use as your daily energy and store as glycogen, you'll burn the remainder off as body heat and through physical movement other than sports, such as walking to work, typing, yard work, and fidgeting. Again, also, more citations here. So basically, he's just saying that if you eat more carbohydrates than your body needs, it's going to be burned off through body heat and through other physical movements throughout the day. Very simple. Turning sugars into fats is a process called de novo lipogenesis. Pigs and cow use this process to convert carbohydrates from grains and grasses into calorie-dense fats. Blah, 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 blah. We humans, on the other hand, are very inefficient at converting carbohydrate to fat. We don't do it under normal conditions. Again, another citation here, 6 to 15. We'll check those out at, towards the end of the video. The cost for this conversion is 30% of the calories consumed. Subjects overfed large amounts of simple sugars under experimental laboratory conditions. However, will convert a small amount of carbohydrate to fat. For example, both trim and obese women fed 50% more calories than they usually ate in a day, along with an extra 135 grams of refined sugar, produced less than 4 grams of fat daily. That's just 36 extra calories stored as fat per day. You'd have to overeat all those extra calories and table sugar every day for nearly 4 months just to gain 1 pound of extra body fat. Now that study there... I don't necessarily agree with it. I don't think that you'd actually gain fat long term. Um, these women, these trimmin obese women, are probably still eating some animal products, still eating some high fat foods, which is probably contributing 
um, to that fat gain that they get over time. And now here there's another the Eat More Search Challenge. I recommend that you pick up the book so you can read through it. I'm not going to go into that one specifically. The warning about carbohydrates turning to body fat is a myth and nothing more. In humans, even substantial quantities of refined and processed carbohydrates contribute only a trivial amount to body fat. Again, same citation 6 to 15, which we'll check out. The same is not true of animal and vegetable fats, however, a passenger on a crew, blah, 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 75, blah, 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 doesn't really matter. So where does all the belly fat come from? It bears repeating, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. Fat is the metabolic dollar saved for the next famine. So when you're eating high fat foods, it is easily stored as fat on the body. So here we go. From there, after you eat dairy, meat, nuts, oils, and other high fat foods, you absorb their fat from your intestine into the bloodstream. From there, it is transported to billions of adipose fat cells for storage. This is a very efficient process. It uses up only 3% of the calories you consume to move the fat on your fork and spoon to your body fat. This search takes place almost, effortle almost effortlessly after every fat filled meal. If you have your body fat chemically analyzed, it will reveal the kinds of fats you commonly eat. So basically he's saying, fat you eat is a fat you wear, eat excess amount of carbohydrates, it only contributes a trivial amount of fat to your body, and that would probably mean that you'd have to con consistently overeat every single day for months and months and months just to gain a, a pound of body fat, which doesn't really even happen anyways um, if you're following a completely low fat diet. So let's go to the to the citation. So Dr. Dr. McDougall has done all the work for us. So we can see here he's quoting published studies, uh, de novo lipogenesis in humans, uh, glycogen storage capacity and, and de novo lipogenesis, effective carbohydrate overfeeding on the whole body and adipose tissue um, metabolism in humans, uh, more overfeeding, overfeeding carbohydrate or fat, overfeeding on energy. Um, so these are all the studies, so you're welcome to check these out superhuman yourself if you want to research these public studies and then you can make your own conclusions based on those. Um, again here, more studies based on this. Um, I like this one, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Um, so that's basically going into excess carbohydrates are burned off through body heat. So what we're seeing here with the published research here in the starch solution um, that Dr. John McDougall has cited is that carbohydrates do not make you fat. You'd have to overeat consistently on, on carbohydrates and those probably those people are probably still eating animal fats. Um, they're still probably eating high fat foods. So that's probably what is actually contributing uh, to their weight gain long term. The fat you eat is the fat you wear, which is a very, very common uh, phrase that we use here in the high carb, low fat scene. So why did Andrew Perlo gain fat? You know, thrash thrashed his metabolism through water fasting and calorie restriction. Probably a lot of the weight that he gained was, um, was water weight. Um, so did he actually get fat on carbohydrates? The published research says that no, in fact, he did not get fat on, uh, on carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are slimming, so make sure you eat up on all the fruits, all the vegetables, all the rice, uh, corn, potatoes, etc., etc., um, in order to get slim on, uh, on, on food, basically. Anyways, guys, Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Remember, remember to carve the fuck up. Eat as much as you want um, from slimming carbohydrates. Keep the salt intake low. Keep the oils, the fats, and all that kind of crap away, and you'll be rocking it. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Peace out.